switching gears again. So mentally uh, preparing for a big ride. You know, um, I think that there's a few different things that we could talk about here. So I think it would make sense to start with, you know, somebody looking at that training plan and they go, I don't know if I can do this, you know? So I think there's that part of the mental part. And then there's the mental part of maybe as you're leaving that day for the ride and maybe when you're getting gas towards the end. So do you want to uh, kind of walk me through that? Maybe somebody who's looking at the training plan day one and thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to do this in 22 weeks or however far out it is? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, the 22 week pl training plan seems like, you know, a huge undertaking. 500 miles in a week seems like almost an impossible undertaking. I mean, honestly, you know, there's not many people who can say that they've ridden 540, by the way, not 500, 540 miles in a week or some percentage of that. Like, let's say, you know, you're, you end up only riding four of the 500, you know, 40 miles. That's still huge. Mm. And that's the kind of mileage that professional cyclists at the very top level do in a week. So, if you look at it either, you know, if you look at it as the whole enchilada, you know, 22 weeks, how am I going to do that? Or 500 miles are going to do that. It's, it's, it's going to be daunting and it's going to be tough for you to process how you can do it, especially if you've never done it because you don't have any evidence of being able to do it. But if you break it down, like you look at that 22 week training plan and just look at the first week. Or maybe just look at the first day. All you have to do is one day at a time. And that's how you start. You just start one day at a time. And the plan starts with very little volume, very little intensity to make it easy to, you know, to, to, you know, comply with the frequency that is probably the most important thing about training. That, you know, getting the frequency of getting five rides in a week. Sometimes you might not get five rides. So, you know, you might ask yourself, how am I going to ride for five days for 22 weeks? Well, you might not. You, you, you might start the first week and you might get three or four rides in. You know, that's a lot better than no rides. And then the next week you might get five. The following you might get two because life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. You know, work, and family, things like that. So you just take it one day at a time and you do what you can do and you just kind of continue on the plan you know if you if you miss a certain amount just go on and, and and pick up the plan where where it you know where it is on that day um uh so that's kind of how to approach the plan you know one day at a time you know right. an hour here two hours here an hour there well i know um, people too with a long uh long training like this they get a little bit um you're nervous that they're not going to even have the time to train, right? But I think we, one of the things worth highlighting with your training plan, like you mentioned, especially the first 10 weeks or so, is you're doing two hours or less. You know, it's not like you have to get out on the bike. Eventually, you're going to have to put more hours on the bike when you're out there. But um, it is something that people can still see gains if they're kind of working your training plan as it's yeah. laid out, right? Yeah, no, you make, you make a probably the most important point in personal one-on-one -on -one coaching the first thing a coach is going to ask you, if you're like, if you hired me to be your coach, mm -hmm. first thing I'm going to say to you, besides, you know, we're going to talk about maybe some goals or everything, is I'm going to ask you, how many hours do you have a week to train? Some people have five hours a week. Some people have 10. Some people have 15. And, and this program assumes that you have, everybody has X amount of hours. And that's obviously not true. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to do whatever you can. You got to be part of that. I would say that, you know, the least amount of hours that you have to train for an event like this, the more specific and the more careful you have to be about training, you know, to really prepare for it. Uh, so you, that might be a better, you know, a, a, a good cause for, um, you know, having a personal coach, a one-on-one -on -one coach that can make a program that says, okay, if you only got five hours a week, this is the best way to use those five hours, you know, to, to uh, okay. prepare for this. Um, so that's the problem with generic training programs is that it doesn't address those critically important issues because, you know, eventually on this program, you're going to be riding eight to 10 hours a week. And I think maybe even some 12 hour weeks, you know, and some people just don't have the time to do it. So yeah. they got to, they got to do something differently. Well, okay. uh, 
moving forward as far as kind of mental training. So the day of the ride, uh, it's your first day going out. Maybe it's, you know, you got a pretty good 70 mile day out ahead of you. Um, what are you telling somebody if they're, if they're feeling nervous or what, what's the, what, what kind of uh, tips or maybe what mistakes have you seen somebody have because of the way they're approaching the ride mentally? You know, I, I think that the, uh, the psychology of, of performance, you know, of, 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 or, you know, of, of achieving, you know, goals is really interesting. And you can definitely talk yourself into having a bad day. And you can talk yourself into having a great day. And here's the, here's the way that, you know, I talk to, you know, the folks doing the Empire State Ride. Is that when you start in the morning, it's not a 70-mile ride. You're, you're, you're riding from the start to the first uh, feed zone or, or, you know, or food station, which generally is somewhere between 20 and 25 miles. So what you have to think about, it's kind of the same thing as the plan. Take one day at a time, except mm -hmm. on the Empire State Ride, you take one leg on each day at a time. So when, so it's the, the, think about the difference in thinking when you're like about to take off, man, today I got to ride 70 miles. Like, you know, I, you know, right now I'm thinking I got to ride 70 miles or I just got to get to that first feed station, 25 miles. I can get off my bike. I can drink. I can eat something, get the encouragement from anybody else, then get ready. And I got another 25 mile section. And so you break it down into small sessions like that. It's not a, you don't have to do 70 miles without nonstop. And, it, and generally speaking, you're probably going to do harder rides in your training than you're going to do during the Empire State Ride. Because when you're, you know, when you get to the point where you're doing 50 and 60 miles on, on your training program, or maybe even 70 miles or something, or, you know, three or four hours, you're probably not going to stop as much. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, so you're going to be prepared to be able to ride 40 or 50 miles nonstop. And then you come to the Empire State Ride and all of a sudden you're only riding 25 miles and you're stopping, you're replenishing and you're socializing and you're in no hurry. You know, there's nothing else to do. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the beauty of these types of rides. You know, it's like you get up in the morning, you're like, I get to ride my bike all day long yeah. and then they're going to feed me. And, you know, my, you know, my place to sleep is going to be set up for me. And, and, you know, so when you start to think about it like that, you know, in, in, in small pieces, it's not that daunting of, of a thing to do as long as you're, you know, you've prepared as well as you can based on the hours that you've been able to do. And as you're riding along, you know, those 25 miles day in and day out, those legs, that you're doing the right thing, that the intensity that you're riding is correct, the nutrition and the hydration is correct in between each speed zone. Um, and, you know, I, and listen, this is going to be my, I've done it three times now, and I'm amazed at some of the people who, who you know, complete this ride. Mm. Um, and it's because a lot of them have great attitudes. And, and, you know, most of the people on this thing have great attitudes, you know, and, and that will get you, your mental state will get you, uh, you know, through a day like that, um, uh, you know, either really easy or really hard. Okay. Uh, so just got to be, you know, happy to be there and, and understand the cause, why you're there. And, uh, and then just have fun. And, and the, the, the amount of support you get on this ride is completely different than any five hour ride you're ever going to do by yourself on a training ride. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be like the training in a sense, it's going to be harder than the ride itself. Um, and what I'm going to do is on the screen right now, I'll put a link that people can check out your coaching page at Carmichael Training Systems. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you said too that you'd be willing to talk to people if they have questions and want to reach out, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep, yeah. and uh, and they can they can find me at uh, C Livermore at trainright .com. Okay. Um and you can send me an email um, if you're interested in 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 personal coaching. Um, you know, this is how I make my living, and and you know, I'm happy to answer you know a couple questions here and there, but. 
Um, but generally, if you're if you're interested in in personal, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and 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 you're just curious about what that is, I'm happy to talk to you about that. Um, and you know, I've I've talked to a few Empire State riders along the way. Last year, I remember Scott Cohen. Um, I spoke to him for a while on the phone, and you know, I was had had to hold him back, you know, because Scott was just riding way too much. And <laughs> um, and but you know, for me, this is so enjoyable working with folks that that are doing this ride because it's it's a huge undertaking. The cause is unbelievable. Um, and you know, every year I get more and more more and more motivated and I want to participate more. So I'm happy to do this. Uh, yeah. 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 It's not too often you get to have an experience with so many amazing parts to it where it's like the cause and raising funds for cancer research, the the views that you get to see, whether it's being in, you know, middle of New York State and seeing these gorgeous rivers and hills, or you're in, you know, seeing the Statue of Liberty, Niagara Falls. Uh, but the camaraderie was nothing like I had anticipated when I went through the ride. I mean, it's really great. And it's just, it's amazing event to go through. So it really is, man. I look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, as I've mentioned also earlier in this video, I will have um, in the description of this video, there'll be resources. Uh, we do uh, live Facebook interviews in the past, and I think we might be doing some of those in the future. So yeah. if it, that's an opportunity too, if you join the Facebook page and join the discussion there that Charlie can answer your questions when we're doing those. So there'll be all sorts of resources too that we'll link out to in the description. Yeah, I think I think we're I think we're going to be set up for doing three li uh, face live Facebooks just like we did last year, and those are those are fun, you know, because you get questions from people and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, anything yeah. I can do to help, I'm I'm more than happy to do it, Eric. All right, well, thank you for your time. I'll let you take care of yourself and get out of here and right. uh, maybe hydrate because I'm sure you're probably riding tomorrow too. I know yeah. you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right eric take care right. man all right yep. see you charlie okay bye all right